had drugs in Thailand. It's completely captivating. I am Liz Hara. I am a freelance puppet builder and costume builder, a puppeteer, and writer and director. It's a story of a little boy named Peter, his grandfather, and the animals that live near their cottage. Listen to me. Never go into the woods. Something terrible lives in the woods. <laughs> I've pretty much always been building things and making things. Um, when I was little, I would always, you know, dress up my troll dolls and my stuffed animals in little outfits uh, and set them up in little scenarios. And that actually just really started me along the path of making things and using that as a way of telling stories. I majored in American culture at Vassar. But I think at that point, I still thought I was going to go to law school. And my father said, you don't, you don't want to do that. There are plenty of lawyers. Find something you really enjoy. I was in a class with a girl who was a PR intern for the Henson Company. And I told her that I'd always wanted to work for them. So I called that evening, had an interview the next day, and then started the day after that. And switched the focus of my major to uh, children's television. Yes. After I graduated from college, I was living in Minnesota, and I ended up working for a tailor for a year. There weren't a ton of other opportunities, but it really developed my sewing skills. And when I started doing more costume making, I was just so much faster. Balancing your real life with your artistic life is always a struggle, uh, just because not only does it take up so much of your work days, but it also takes up your free evening time, especially if you're doing theater, that is when shows are. I'm learning as I'm getting older how to leave some of the work behind. Um, and fortunately, working in a workshop physically, I can't be working all the time. But I also make a point of working on projects with my friends, and so the time that I am working, it's also seeing the people I really care about. Mentorship actually has been extremely yeah. important. I was in a program <laughs> when I was in high school called the Mentor Connection, and I was set up with a set designer at a local theater. I learned so much from him and was working 10 hours a week in his theater. And ever since then, I've really tried to find that model. So I would always find somebody who has the experience that I want. And I actually ask them at, often to be my mentor because that's really the way that you get good at this kind of job is from learning from other people. And in our community, because we know that's pretty much all we've got, you know, educationally, there are only, I think, two or three schools that have any significant puppetry program. Uh, we are really open about our information. Jab it off of your finger, and then you have this control. So. Within that little, the feet to the magnets. Oh, that's right. I think kind of two different minority groups. It's just a matter of accessibility and visibility. You know, how many puppeteers did you ever know growing up? You know, it's hard to imagine yourself becoming something like that unless you know that that's a possibility. I'm fortunate in that I fell into it early, so I knew that it was possible, but I think just a lot of people don't get that exposure. So, so we're gonna just, uh, there we're aren't gonna, we're gonna just really that know, many women uh, puppeteer performers, and there's a lot of competition for the characters that are female. So I think there also needs to be greater diversity in the writing and the producing, just so that more characters and more opportunities can be created for puppeteers. Today, Tucker John turns eight years old.
I really like inventing as I go along because every project is different. You never get bored. And sometimes you also want to shoot yourself in the face because everything is new. It's on Velcro. Okay, okay. So um, you have to take the bolts out. Oh, okay. Yeah. My friend Eric, who is one of the chefs here at the Public Kitchen, says that when you hate yourself and you think that this is the worst thing you've ever done, ever, you know you're about halfway through. <laughs> when you're always making new discoveries and finding new ways of doing things, and then every project you do after that is a little bit easier or you have some background. Like, I know that this works and I know that this doesn't. So it's just, you constantly see how you're improving. <laughs> <laughs> Which is extremely gratifying. Thanks for watching our episode of Lady Points about Elizabeth Hara. Please subscribe below. And follow us on Tumblr and Facebook for updates. We're at ladypoints.tumblr.com and facebook.com slash ladypoints. Thanks. Bye. Bye.